Omaikyana Timandasya Snansana Svakya Sakshvamri Tamye Na Tasmai Sikhavena Ma Sitsitanya Manobistam Staptam Yena Dutale Svama Pagadamayam Dadanti Svam Padantika So I'm very happy to be with all of you today. I will present the essential te teachings of Srila Rupa Goswami. But for first I ask the blessings of all the devotees, especially the senior devotees like Yeraj, Maharaj, Madhavananda, Prabhu and so many others. Please bless me that I can speak something which is useful for all of us. So, Sila Rupa Goswami, his essential teachings are explained in the 19th chapter of the Matya Dila of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. We heard from Madhavananda Prabhu already how uh, extraordinary Sila uh, Rupa Goswami was empowered that uh, but Srila Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami starts speaking in the 19th chapter of the Madhyam Lila about the mission that Rupa Goswami received from Sitchitanya Mahaprabhu. And he speaks about that in the first text. There. Vrindavanyam Rasakeli Vartam. Kale la luptam niya sakti mutka. Sanchaya rupe fiatanot punacha. Prabhu vidoprach ivaloka shistim. Before the creation of this cosmic manifestation, the Lord enlightened the heart of Lord Brahma. With the, with the details of the creation and manifested the Vedic knowledge in exactly the same way the lord being anxious to revive the vrindavan pastimes of of lord krishna impregnated the heart of rupa goswami with spiritual potency by this potency shila rupa goswami could revive the activities of krishna in vrindavan activities almost lost to memory in this way he spread krishna consciousness throughout the world. So this is a beautiful comparison comparing the empowerment Lord Brahma received to the heart in the beginning of the creation after Brahma heard Tappa performed austerities in devotional service for a long time and he attained the favor of the Lord who found him uh, capable to take shares of the creation and empowered him to the heart. In the same way, the Lord empowered Shila Rupa Goswami to revive the activities of Krishna in Vrindavan. Of course, his Rupa Manjari, he was most, the most qualified person to revive this Krishna consciousness. But then these essential instructions of uh, Lord Chaitanya to Rupa Goswami we find in this chapter. Lord Chaitanya instructed Rupa Goswami at the Dasa Vameda God Prayag and instructed them in the philosophy of devotional service. But before we present a summary of this essential preaching, that Krishna Das Kaviraj, he emphasized how Rupa Goswami got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And 
also about its mission. Not only it's not only about reviving the activities of Krishna in Vrindavan that uh, based on the essential instructions he got from Lord Chaitanya but also to expand on these to expand on these instructions that uh, and Srila Prabhupada emphasizes that also in a purpose of the Bhagavatam 2.944 he writes Bra Brahmaji had also advised Narada previously he should expand the idea he had heard from Brahmaji so Brahmaji received from Lord Krishna the Chatur Sloka Bhagavatam and he gave that to Narada and asked him to expand on it. So, in the same way, Srila Sitchitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Rupa Goswami only in a nutshell. So, these instructions are instructions in a nutshell. But, but Rupa Goswami expanded this very elaborately. And the same su subject was further expanded by Jiva. Goswami, Shiva Goswami has so many commentaries in his Satsandarvas on the Bhagavatam. And even further by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is halfway between us and Lord Chaitanya, more or less. And by some he is considered to be a reincarnation of Rupa Goswami because he was completely in the mood of Rupa Goswami. And expanded it it further it expanded the writings of Rupa Goswami even further that uh, but then this mercy Sitchitai Mahaprabhu taught Rupa Goswami the ultimate truth about Lord Krishna the truth about devotional service and the truth about the transcendental mellows culminating in conjugal love between Radha and Krishna. Finally, he told Rupa Goswami about the ultimate conclusions of the Srimad Bhagavatam. By entering the heart of Rupa Goswami, Sitchitanya Mahaprabhu empowered him to ascertain properly the conclusion of all truths. He made him an experienced devotee whose, whose decisions correctly agreed with the verdict of the disciplic succession. Thus, Rupa Goswami was personally empowered by Sit Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Shikavi Karnapuram, he confirms this. This is a verse from Chaitanya Chandrodaya. In the course of time, the transcendental news of Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan was almost lost. To enunciate explicitly, explicitly, explicitly those transcendental pastimes, Sitchitanya Mahaprabhu empowered Sri Rupa Goswami and Santan Goswami with the nectar of his mercy to carry out his work in Vrindavan. So, Lord Chaitanya told Rupa Goswami, as, as far me the God, the, about the transcendental ecstatic love of Krishna. That, uh, and the Lord embraced him very fondly and bestowed all his mercy upon him. So, Lord Chaitanya expanded his mercy to Rupa Goswami, just so that he could render these transcendental services. But Rupa Goswami, he was aware that he was empowered. But uh, how does he present himself, knowing that he was empowered? So, because Swami said, although I am the lowest, lowest and have no knowledge, the inspiration to write transcendental literature about the voice and service has been mercifully bestowed, bestowed upon me. So for 10 days, Sitchitanya Mahaprabhu stayed at Prayag instructing Rupa Goswami. 
empowering him with the necessary potency. And he starts with his, instru his instructions to Rupa Goswami with this famous verse Brahmanda Brahmate Konya Bhakya Vaan Jiva Guru Krishna Prashadi Bhai Bhakti Lata Beach that, uh, So by their karma people are going up and down they are going up and down in the universe that uh, some are being elevated to planetary systems or going down into lower planetary systems and after millions of years wandering from, from the highest to the lowest planets. Yes. One is very fortunate, one who is very fortunate to, uh, to uh, associate with a spiritual master by the grace of Krishna. Such a person, by the grace of the spiritual master, gets the seat of devotional service. So here, Lord Chaitanya starts comparing the vo devotional service with, in the, the process of devotional service, he described it completely with this analogy, one receives a seat. The seat and he explains the analogy of watering the seed. One waters the seed by the process of Shravan Kirtan. And gradually, the Bhakti creeper grows. That, uh, but uh, it grows and grows, as he described. It goes through the coverings of the universe and there's the Brahma Jyoti to Vaikuntha and Koloka, enters Koloka Vrindavan and takes shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna. But also, Lord Chaitanya explains that the Bhakti Kripa grows, but one must be very careful so that the offenses one makes does not uproot that the, the offenses one makes, yeah, which are compared to weeds, that they are not overgrowing the creeper. One must cut them down. That uh, otherwise, the creeper may may lose its leaves and dry up. And Lord Chaitanya speaks about one should avoid the witches of. Mukti and Bhukti. Desire for liberation of desire for material enjoyment. That uh, it says the taste, to taste the fruit of devotional service in Goloka Vrindavan, that's the highest perfection. That, uh, and then here Srila Krishna Das Kavaraj mentions an. Uh, Comp. Yeah, an, an, a comparison, an analogy, but uh, it's interesting. It's like Rupa Goswami's first that uh, when he says, "Don't, don't go, go to see Krishna as Keshi God, because if you do, then all your love and." for friends, society, family, and, and so on, and, and your attachment to them will be finished. That, so don't go to see Krishna. <laughs> that, uh, here it's similarly, it says, as long as there is not the slightest fragments of pure love for Krishna, which is the perfect medicinal herb for controlling Lord Krishna within the heart, the opulences of the material perfection known as Siddhis, the Brahminical perfection, Satya, Sam, Titiksha and so on, the trance, the trance of the yogis and the monistic bliss of Brahman all seem wonderful for man. So that's interesting. As long as one has no the slightest love for Krishna, these things, these material achievements, 
they look wonderful. But we have to give up this muk witches mukti and bukti and this strife for perfections of the cities for wanting to taste the blissful the bliss of Brahman. So surely Lord Chaitanya builds up and he comes to the point of explaining pure devotional service. And then we have the verse, of course, the famous verse of Rupa Goswami, Anyabilasta Sunyam Jnana Karmata Navitam Anikulyena Krishna Nusilnam Bhakti Uttama. That, uh, this is the description of first class devotional service. One must be devoid of all material desires, knowledge, and, mon and knowledge and, and monistic philosophy or fruitive action, the devotee must constantly serve Krishna favorably. And then, so, Lord Chaitanya establish, establishes what Sudha Bhakti, pure devotional service. And after that, he mentions the verse of Narada Muni. Narada Muni's definition of devotional service. Sarvopadi vinar muktam tat parat van anirmanam risikena risikesha sevanam bhakti utama. So devotional service means uh, engaging all your senses in the service of the Lord. So rendering service to please the transcendental senses of the, of the Lord. Then and such service, Narada said, has two side effects. The first is one, one becomes several part of inner muktam, one becomes free from all material designations, identification with this body. That, and by serving the Lord, one, one, one's heart and one's sense become purified. That, and further, Lord Chaitanya tells. Because Swami, and he quotes the verse of the Bhagavatam. Salokya Saski Sami Pyas Rupya Kait Mapyuta Diphyamana Nahina Divana Matseva Namjana. A devotee is not interested in the five uh, types of liberation. He does not accept these forms of liberation that uh, in preference of serving me. So by rendering the devotional service, Lord Chaitanya says, one transcends the modes. Mamsi of Yabicharina Bhakti Uruna Sivita, Sakadan Samatichitam Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpati. That, uh, so, and one transcends the modes and one attains the spiritual platform of direct devotional service. So, Krishna is the most pure when our senses become pure by performing the voice and service. Then we come, we come on the platform of pure devotion and service and can serve, perform direct devotion and service. But then Lord Chaitanya speaks about Vaidhisana Bhakti. How, how to come to that platform by performance of regular devotional service, one becomes attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, Bhagavad Gita 12.9, that uh, by following the regulative principles of devotional service, one develops not a desire to attain me, an attachment. And and by that attachment, one becomes purified, and then one can develop love of Godhead. And then Lord Chaitanya goes immediately to the highest, Prema. And we think, yeah, we attain Prema, that's it. No, Lord Chaitanya said, in Prema there are seven stages. Sneha, Mana, Pranaya, Raga, Anuraga, Bhava, Ma Bhava. And it says all these stages of prema combined the stai bath 
of continuous love of God. That, uh, and he explains, and Rupa Goswami will elaborate on that in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. In addition to these stages, there, are, there is Vibhav, Anubhav, and Lord Chaitanya, and, and, and Srila Prabhupada in the purport gives examples of Anubhav. Dancing, rolling on the, on the ground, singing, yelling, jumping, making loud noises, yawning, heavy breathing, not caring for public opinion, discharging saliva, roaring louder, unsteadiness, hiccuping. But, and then Lucitania comes to the point explaining, yes, there are five, five categories of attachment of a devotee to Krishna. And these five, uh, five categories are Santarati, Dasyarati, Vatsaliarati and Madhuri, Madhurarati. That's so, and there are different devotees, Lord Chaitanya said, and they have different attachment to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The transcendental mellows derived from the voice and service are also of five varieties. And the chief transcendental mellows experienced with the Supreme Personality of Godhead are Santa, Dasya, Vatsalya and Madhura. And of course then, because Swami said, Besides these five direct transcendental methods of devotion service, that uh, which are permanently situated in the heart of a devotee, every devotee is in one of these five rasas. There are seven indirect emotions which appear under certain conditions that uh, and uh, then Lord Chaitanya gives examples the Santa Bhaktas the Four Kumaras Fraternity examples are Shridam Sudam that uh, but of course we, we spoke Madhavana Prabhu spoke and, and also Mother Prashanti spoke about the mood in Vrindavan and the mood in Varka. So we have fraternity in Vrindavan, Shidam, Sudam, fraternity in Varka, Bhima and Arjun. So we have parental love in Vrindavan, Madhya Sodananda Maharaj in Varka, Vasudeva and Devaki. Conjugal love, the gopis in Vrindavan, the queens in Varka and the goddess of fortune in Vaikuntha. So, then there is further analysis of these five rasas until the end of the chapter. So these are the, this is a summary presentation of the essential teachings of Lord Chaitanya to uh, Rupa Goswami and Rupa Goswami has elaborated on this in Bhakta Rasamrita Sindhu and uh, Srila Prabhupada gave us a summary study Bhakta Rasamrita Sindhu and there we find all these details and these beautiful examples of each of these rasas and secondary rasas that uh, so Srila Prabhupada calls Nectar Devotion the manual for every devotee how to practice devotion and service so without this manual it would have been very difficult but we have all received the mercy of Rupa Goswami through his Bhakti Samrita Sindhu, which is an elaboration of these essential instructions of Lord Chaitanya to Srila Goswami. Thank you very much.
Hare Krishna, Jai Prabhu.